up, everybody? So glad that you tuned in tonight for another night of Life in the Vine Bible Study. Hey, I am Pastor Colbert, the senior pastor, lead pastor of the Greater True Vine Church, located in the heart of the Soto, Texas. Man, are y'all ready to get into this? All right, let's go right back to Genesis. I'm in a teaching right now titled, I'm Working on My Family. I'm Working on My Family. And it comes from the big title, the overarching theme, I'm working on something. And I think it's the right time to deal with relationships and being married and keeping yourself as a single and all the stuff that, you know, of being a human. And I think this is a word for you. So let's go. Genesis 2, 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 says, then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. I know you've seen the movie, but it's a cold-blooded title. I want to talk about the help. Yeah, the help. That's what I want to talk about. Um, last week, I felt almost obligated to address what I consider to be one of the most important issue, not only in America history, and this is a big statement, but in the history of the world, and that is America redefining of what constitutes a family. And unlike many of my fellow clergy in the city and abroad, uh, I do not take lightly what our nation say about same-sex marriage. I, I don't view it as simply as their opinion. When you have access to the biggest bully pulpit in the world, everything you say has major implications that you must be held accountable for. And when the president of the United States says to millions, a, a vulnerable of young people who are facing more sexual and relational pressure than any previous generation that two women or two men of the same sex having any kind of romantic relationship or even getting married is perfectly okay then i as a pastor i feel obligated to say something now pastor are, are you beating a dead horse because you've been talking about this for weeks and i'm going to talk about it some more this is not just some whatever issue. This is major because people and some pastors act like God has changed his mind. God didn't change his mind about family. God did not change his mind. Well, there's more issues at stake right now, pastor, than just one hot button issue. Well, which one are those? Okay, which one is those? Tell me. Somebody please tell me what's more important than family. What's more important than two confused young ladies walking around like they husband and wife? What's more important than two brothers walking around like they just like they women? Thinking that God is perfectly okay with that. If you struggle with this, I guess you're just gonna be mad at me. But I gotta teach what I believe, and I hope you love me because I love you too. But what's more important than keeping the family together? I just wanna know. So let me restate. Just in case you didn't get a chance to join us last week, I'm not going to change my mind about the family, what God says about the family, biblical family, biblical marriage, and we're going to stand. Yeah, we're going to stand on that. But at the same time, I'm not going to be some stupid, homophobic, ignorant preacher saying stupid and hateful stuff to those that are in that alternative lifestyle. I'm not going to be some stupid homophobic preacher calling them out their name and downing them. And, and, but I'm, I'm just going to stand up for what I believe while showing love and ministry at the same time. Now, by no means do I think this ministry should be the poster child church about how to start a family. I mean, I mean, me, if not most of us at GTV are blended in some form. I mean, come on, somebody was married before, okay? One or both of us brought children into the marriage. And if nothing else, 99% of the married couples watching did not save themselves sexually for each other until marriage. Now, I'm open enough to have a critical, spiritual, biblical, and theological debate about how God feels about all that, but none of them in my particular hermeneutic of biblical text compares to two people of the same sex getting married. That's not the same. I can show you in the Bible. I can show you clearly in the Bible where there were people, and please don't go to Abraham, oh my goodness, 
all of them were blended. <laughs> I mean, all of them were blended, you know. Um, but I, I'm not saying it's okay, but it's it, but it is in the Bible. God seemed to bless them in spite of all that. But don't compare that to same-sex marriage. Don't compare to somebody that's been divorced and remarried to same-sex marriage. I'm not saying that was all right. I don't know why you got divorced. Don't compare some of the things that many of us have done to same-sex marriage because it's a whole different beast. It still involves a man and a woman which is the foundation of a family. This is some good stuff, everybody. I, I feel this is my most important family series. Out of all the series that I did about family, I think this is one of the most important series. Now, last week, I've been arguing my thesis about a biblical family and how it starts with the man. Okay, everybody type the man, the man. Now, I'm going somewhere, but I'm gonna take my time getting there. I made the point last week that every family needs a man every family yeah can't start a family without a man it's impossible you need a man to start a family that's not only as i told you a biblical and theological truth but it's also a physical and anthropological truth yeah every baby needs a seed from a man oh every baby needs a seed from a man two women can stimulate but they can't procreate oh two men can't have a baby without a woman's womb. I promise there will be no baby without a woman's womb. Why? Because God has created it that way. Come, let us reason together. If God, listen, if God is so okay with it, then why not allow them to physically start a family? Yeah, if God is so okay with it, is he stupid? Is he crazy? Of course not. He's God all by himself. If God wanted it, then why not let two of them have a baby together? Now, let's spend tonight reinforcing we as Christians with our limited biblical hermeneutic belief. And we see God saying that it takes a man and a woman to start a family. Now, give me some likes if you believe me. Come on, if you believe this with me. All right. All right. Let's do this. OK, a family should begin with a breathe on brother who burst out Eve through his prayer. I've been telling singles for the last year, don't let a physical <laughs> need push you to a premature choice. Don't let a physical need push you to a premature choice. Mm. You better make sure whoever you hook up with love Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say that again. You better make sure whoever you hook up with love Jesus. Every sister that's watching the Bible says, and let's start with Genesis, that Eve came out of Adam. He was a breathed on brother. Yeah, God breathed in him and he became a living being and she came out of him. I told you, man, oh, I told you, brother, that a bad kingdom brother can birth out a sister. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who remember last week? I said God was pregnant with Adam and Adam, as it were, was pregnant with Eve and Eve was pregnant with Cain and Abel. And I told you, since he didn't have a woman part, he couldn't push her out. And God had the first C-section and cut Eve out of Adam. So you need to understand, I don't want you to jump into nothing that God did not ordain. But what I like about Eve more than anything, can you handle this? Is that God picked her. Woo! <laughs> Look at the order in which things happen, everybody. First, God gave him purpose, gave the man purpose. Remember I told you last week, God said, I want you to work in that garden. Let me tell you something. So, so stop dating brothers with no job. Type in the chat, no job, no woman. <laughs> Come on, no job, no woman. Stop dating brothers with no job. Amen. Come on, no job, no woman. Too broke to have sex. Just pray. All right, y'all stick with me. The Bible says God gave him purpose. He said, I want you to work in that garden. Inside your purpose, my brother, will come your prosperity. When a brother get in purpose, money going to come to him. When a brother gets in God kind of purpose for your life, money going to come to you. You won't have to go looking for money. Money going to look for you. Can I get a brother to type money going to look for me? My knees are met. Plenty more to put in store. I'm setting my up my future. Stop hooking up with brothers who are cute with no purpose. 
The Bible said that Adam had purpose. Don't let a physical need push you to a premature choice. Adam has purpose. Then I told you, God gave him parameters. Say parameters. Yeah, God said that there's a tree in the middle of that garden. If you touch it, you will surely die. Here's the big point. God is teaching him. I said last week, God said, I got to teach you. You just don't do what you want to do. I told you, don't ever date a man who don't answer to a man. Woo, that's scary. But I'm telling y'all, first of all, he doesn't have a father or don't like his father. Coupled with that, he don't go to church. So he won't submit himself with any pastor, which means he have an issue with authority. Yeah, but yet he wants you, he wants to have authority over you, but it's a misguided authority because if he doesn't know how to be under, how can he possibly be over correctly? The way you learn how to be over is being under. When you learn how to submit, then you respect those who are submitted to you. But if you have no order over you, then your authority is thwarted and perverted because you don't know how to follow. Every brother in this church, you know I'm not trying to run your life, brother. I got too much. I'm trying to handle myself. I'm not only trying to help you when I tell you get submitted to the leadership of this church. Get submitted to some elder. Get submitted to whoever you're under in ministry because that just helps you to be a better brother. Every brother needs leadership and guidance in his life. God set it up that way. Pastor, you're going to preach to us sisters tonight. Type in the chat and say, he's coming, girl. He's coming. He's coming. But Because I need you to understand that God says, first of all, I got to teach your behind parameters. Then God said, all right, brother, uh huh. now you got your purpose, you got your prosperity, you got your parameters. He said, now let's get this party started. Let's get your family started. Yeah, let's get your family started, brother. And to get your family started, now you're going to need a female partner. Mm -hmm, a female partner. And this is where I stopped at last week. And this is what I'm be going to begin tonight. I'm going to begin tonight. A female partner. Now, Genesis 2.18, look at it. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. I will make him a helper. Here's what's a trip. Adam never asked for a woman. God said you need one. <laughs> he wasn't praying about it. You know, Lord, go to hook a brother up. No, God said this is not good. Plus, Adam, I don't like the way you looking at that monkey. <laughs> yeah, when that monkey pick up that banana, I didn't like the way you looked at him. God said, let me hurry up because I see bestiality on the way. God said, let me hurry up and get this brother somebody because he's looking at that monkey and everything. He said, it's not good. <laughs> for a man to be alone. I love what the preacher's outline uh, sermon commentary says. It says, and he is incomplete. He's unfinished. He's unfulfilled. He's deficient. He's lonely. And I want to be careful there. I, I don't want to contradict what I teach because I'm not looking to marry some incomplete sister. The Bible says in Galatians, we are complete in him. So I'm not really looking for, okay, I disagree with, remember, commentary just means comment. So I disagree with his comment. I agree with some of it, okay, but, uh, but I disagree. He wasn't incomplete because God had already made him who he needed to be. God just says, I'm just going to add to your completeness. Mm, catch this now. He said, I'm going to add something because I don't want you sisters walking around saying, I am incomplete. You're not incomplete. You got the Holy Spirit. You got Jesus. You can praise God. If nobody ever asks you for your number, you can still praise God. Can I get some single folk and even married folk here that would just type in the chat and say, can't nobody. Do you like Jesus? Woo, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. God decided to make him a helper, a suitable help. I gave you this last week. He says, I'm going to give you a helper. He said, you need a female partner. I'm sorry that our government, our nation said that it doesn't matter, male or female. So now as a pastor, I'm going to teach you what you need to understand because you're lonely. I'm not making you another Adam. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what God said. Just because you're lonely, I'm not making you another Adam. 
Yeah, I know how I want to do it. I'm God all by myself. I am making you a female partner. So what you don't have, she will have. Ooh, Adam, what you lack, she'll possess. And what she lack, you'll possess. And when y'all come together, something good is going to happen. Ooh, a helper, a corresponding helper. I told you last Wednesday, corresponding helper. The word helper there is not a demeaning term. The word helper there is the same word that God used himself. And I threw these scriptures out to you last week. But tonight, we're going to read them. I didn't get a chance to read them last week because I want you to see this tonight. Psalm 33 and 20. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our what? Help. Woo! And our shield. He is our help. Psalm 75. But I am afflicted and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my what? Help and my deliverer. Boy, if I was a wife, I'd be jumping up and down in my seat. That God had the nerve to call me what he called himself. I promise you, trust your pastor's education and studying ability. When I tell you the same word help in the Hebrew is the word used in Genesis to describe Eve. God calls himself what he calls you. You're not just some sister that lays there and just have his babies and tell him how great he is. Though you should do that, but I'm telling you, you are also a bad sister. And what God means to him in some ways, a good wife means to him. Just like I need God to help me sometimes, my wife becomes a kind of God in my life. Little G God, but a type of God. She helps me. She doesn't just do what I say. A bad sister will help you the way God help you. Some stuff can't nobody do for you but God, and some stuff can't nobody do for you but your wife. Yeah, not a woman on the side, not your sister, not your mother. She, they are not your help, but your wife is your help. And see, brothers don't understand, and I'm tripping now because help, Ooh, help, help. Listen, I'm taking marriages so serious right now. I don't even want to marry half of the folks that ask me to marry them. You don't want no help. You just want somebody to sleep with. You don't want no man in your life. You just want somebody to go half on a baby and half on a house note. You guys don't know how critical this is. This is your help. She's your help. I love that. I love that. She is his help. Mm. The description of her as a corresponding to him means basically, watch this, that was said about him, that was said about him is also true of her. Mm. They both had the same nature, everybody. But what man lacks in his aloneness, she provided. And what she lacks, he provided. Listen, I don't struggle with being a gay brother, but what I need, you can't give me, brother. <laughs> Another man can't give me what I need. Yeah, no brother can give me what I need. There's some brothers who struggle with homosexuality. They don't feel like I feel. This is what we can't be homophobic, okay? This is what we got to deal with in Genesis 3 and understand that because of the fall of man, yeah, you may be attracted to some crazy stuff, but that's not God's will for you. If both of us got the same body parts, we're not supposed to help each other. And this is not homophobic, it's simplistic. The human anatomy, the human anatomy shows me that that supposed to go in there. <laughs> is this children's church, everybody? Come on, come on, I need some adults here. This ain't children's church, okay? Yeah, the human anatomy shows me that, that that's supposed to go in there. It was made for that. <laughs> okay, I'm like Forrest Gump, and that's all I'm going to say about that. But God had a plan for a woman's body when he made her. He said, God said, I know how I made him. I know how I made her. I'm going to make you in such a way that what he has fits with what you got. <laughs> now, because of what happened in Genesis 3, mm -hmm, because of the fall of man, there are some brothers who rather have another brother with the same body that he got and some sister who for whatever reason, and then let me tell you how confused we are, 
Yeah, you supposedly don't supposedly don't like a man, but you're dating a girl who act like a man. <laughs> I'm talking to you straight tonight. Come on, I hope y'all can handle it. I'm talking to you straight. That's how confused we are. Supposedly don't like men, but you're attracted to a girl who act like one. Let me tell you how sick the devil makes us now. You don't like men and attracted to a girl who's trying to be what she can never be. I don't care how much she act like a man. She's a woman of God. And if you're watching me tonight, I call you a woman of God. No matter what the devil tried to tell you, baby, you are a woman of God. You are a beautiful kingdom sister. And you were designed for a man to love you. There's a man that's supposed to love you, girl. Oh, I'm telling you, God had a plan for family, all right? I'm in trouble now. I know it, but I stand by myself. I'm going to teach this, everybody. Okay. All right. When God created Adam, let's go deeper and let's go spiritual. And here's what I want you to understand. When God created Adam, he already had family in mind. When God created Adam, he already had Eve and Cain and Abel in his head. He didn't come up with that later. God had family on his mind. He had family on his mind. When God created family, he created family before he created the government before he created the church, before he created the preachers, the prophets, the patriarchs, before he created the Old and New Testament or the Bible, he made family. Before there was speaking in tongues, before there was preaching and singing, there was family. And you're going to take the oldest institution on earth and change it? And then preachers want to tell me, well, that's not our greatest issue, Colbert. There's some greater issues uh, in our world that's at stake. Well, which one? Yeah, tell me, which, which one? Yeah, that, that, well, you know, which one? Family is just as important than any other issues we're having in this country. See, if we redefine, if we redefine family, the church is going to fall. If, we, if the church falls, cities are going to fall. When the cities fall, states fall. Then the whole world falls. Because everybody just doing whoever they want to do, however it feels. And if we're going to let that go, if we're going to go ahead and prove that, then what's wrong with adultery? Mm -hmm. So then you want to put rules around certain things. Yeah. Uh -huh. Two people sleeping together is fine of the same sex, but a man cheating on his wife is wrong. Why? Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. If you're going to prove all this stuff, if you just not, if you just gonna gonna do what uh, the Bible says, what God's word says, and how God defined things and designed things, then nothing is wrong. Do what you feel. Yeah, I think you can see now my passion regarding the state of our world and our nation. So, all right, verses twenty four and twenty five in Genesis, and I, and I and I gotta stop. He said, "For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. First wife." First time you see wife in the Bible. There it is right there. And you see it in Genesis 2. Joined to his wife. And by the way, the Bible doesn't say his woman. <laughs> the Bible didn't say his fiance. The Bible didn't say joined with his baby mama or the chick he loved to do with sometimes to meet his need. Not That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says wife. Can you handle this? They never dated. Can you handle this? They never slept together. Can you handle this? They never had the awkward, difficult task of getting engaged. And by the way, how many Christians watching was engaged in a holy way? Yeah, it's hard to be engaged with a girl you like and love and you want to put your hands on and you can't touch her until you say, I do. <laughs> Most brothers that's watching me here didn't, okay? You ain't got to say, hey, man, I'm feeling good by myself. Some of you are on your second, third marriage and didn't do that one right. That's just the truth. We talking straight tonight. I'm talking real tonight. It's hard to date somebody. You know she's the one. You know God sent her your way. You can't touch her for this whole nine, ten months period. Somebody ought to say that's the truth right there, Pastor. <laughs> that's why, watch this, I'm going to have to do a series on dating, okay? Because I grew up in church and nobody taught me how to date. Preacher just told me to pray and ask God to send you somebody. And I'm like, I need more than that. Well, just trust God. No, I'm trusting, but I still want to touch this girl. Well, just pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. And you got, you got nothing to do with what's going on. You can talk all this stuff you want, Reverend Doctor, whoever you are now. So, so I'm going to.
to have to do a series on this because I got to give you a couple of things you should know because I said, okay, somebody has to teach something to tell people how to date, all right? But I do want you to understand the Bible says for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed and they shall become one flesh. Have you ever thought about this? A man shall leave his father and mother. Adam and Eve didn't have a father and mother. So who was she going to leave? She was created. Can I give you something else that's going to bless you tonight? She is the only woman in the world that was never a little girl. Mm. She was never a little girl. Every woman watching me was a little girl. Every woman that's watching me tonight, online tonight, was a little girl. Every woman in the world have experienced puberty and menstrual and finding your way and discovering your womanhood and your body changing. Sister girl, the day she got to earth, she was married. That says a lot to me about how important marriage is to God. That God says, girl, the day you got here, you're married. <laughs> you ain't going to have no man. You don't need no man. You need a husband. She, 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 she get a chance to date, you know, you know, now, you know, you get a chance to date and taking a meet mama and let's go out and get something to eat. No, 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 no. Eve, she was born married. That's how important marriage is to God. That the day the first woman got here, she wasn't single. Woo! First day she got on earth, God says, hey, that's your husband. Mm. She's like, okay, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Let's have children. Boom. Now, I did tell you this. The Bible says that they are perfectly kingdom. They are perfectly kingdom. They are sinless. Ooh, this is so good, everybody. They are sinless. Did you catch that? The Bible says they are sinless until Genesis 3. And Genesis 3, when they ate that fruit, she figures out she's naked and he figures out they are naked and then they start covering themselves. Now, this may sound simplistic, but they are naked, everybody. I'm telling you, they just walking, singing and happy with no clothes on. And soon as Adam eats that fruit, Eve like, oh, oh, you, you don't need to be looking at me like this. Because sin makes you shame. Woo. I don't know how many women you don't have to hit like on this because, you know, I know you want to look. You got to look like a Christian girl online tonight. OK, but how many women, as soon as you got through with a brother that been with a brother that you shouldn't have been with something in you was shame. Yeah. You're talking to yourself, telling yourself, why did I let this brother do this to me? Sin will make you shame. Yeah, brother, when you leave your woman's house you, and your wife uh, and your kids are home, you, you leave your woman, your, your chick on the side uh -huh, and, and your wife and kids are at home and you driving back home. And if you if you're any type of a saved man, shame should put on you. Yeah. When you watch pornography and then you finally get through. Yeah. You enjoy it while you're doing it. And as soon as you get through, you feel mm, shame. Why did I do that? I said I wasn't going to watch that stuff no more. I said I was through with this woman. I threw with that girl. Why do I let him keep coming over here and doing this to me? Shame. Sin makes you shame. But holiness makes you bold. Woo! Why do you think I preach so crazy? Because I ain't worrying about no woman coming up in here and saying, I had you, Pastor Colbert. You a lie. <laughs> See, the reason why some pastors can't preach certain stuff is because they don't know who in the church or who going to come in the church. See, I don't care who's in the church. I love one woman, been loving one woman for 21 years, tomorrow, Thursday, November 3rd. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Oh! <laughs> okay, listen, one of the reasons Lady Cobra and I push you beautiful kingdom women at GTV to is getting as healthy as you can is because unlike Eve, you was born after the fall. Oh, this is so good. Can, 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 can I tell you something that should make three people shout and I'm going to let you go? Can I tell you something? Can you handle this? Eve is born totally kingdom. 
And in Genesis 3, she has to go looking for sin. Huh, you are born in sin. Matthew 6, 33, you got to seek the kingdom. Oh, that's so good. This girl, Eve, is so kingdom that she got to go find sin. You so messed up and I'm so messed up. We, go to God, we got to go find the kingdom. We got stuff in us. She's born perfect. Have a dialogue with the devil and go looking and seeking for sin. We were born in sin and got to fight ourselves back. Ooh, okay, I'm going to give you this. I got to go. I'm going to give you this and I'm going to show enough leave you alone because I know y'all tired of me. Are y'all tired of me? Are y'all enjoying this teaching? Come on, let me know because <clears throat> I need you to understand your wife or your future wife, please catch this, is called the help. God says, I'll give you a helper. So my question to every married and unmarried sister that's watching me tonight and goodbye in your present condition, in your present condition, who can you help? Mm. In your present condition, who can you help? In your present condition, who can you help? Okay, because you're broke, number one. You got bad credit. You got 27 children. You got mess from your past. You got trust issues. You got daddy issues. Who are you going to help? The Bible calls you help. You ain't just some sister that lays in the bed with a brother. Baby, you are his help. And as I transition to my daughters, now I already hear y'all saying under your breath, forget all that, Pastor. I'm not helping that brother right now. Watch this. I, I, I need somebody to help me, Pastor. I got all these kids. I got these bills. I need somebody to help me. Uh, <laughs> wait now. Wait. Because Eve didn't have any bills or kids when she got married. She was in a perfect position to help and not need help. <laughs> uh, I'm going to push some sisters tonight. Well, Pastor, I've been helping a lot of brothers. First of all, you were never supposed to help your man. You were supposed to help your Adam. Preach and hear COVID. Teach, Pastor. What most people don't understand is the enemy knows the power of the God kind of family. So early in your life, he was trying to mess up your future family by getting you to jump in some stuff. But there's one thing that messed up his whole strategy and let's have church. It's called the blood of Jesus. Oh, I got to get out of here. Thank y'all. I'll see y'all this Sunday. But the blood of Jesus, it renews, it restores, it restarts, it rejuvenates, it revives. Is there anybody here that's been washing the blood of the lamb? Any sisters here have made some mistakes in your life? Go on and type to another sister and ask this question. What can make me whole again? Uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody type in the comment. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Did I tell y'all the name of this lesson tonight? What did I say the name of this lesson was? What is the title of this teaching tonight? If you don't have church with me, I won't have another Bible study with you because, girl, did I tell you that God calls you what he calls himself? I don't think you believe me. Did I tell you that John 14, 26 says, but the helper, whoo, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you, John 16, 7, but I tell Tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the help of God, I feel like having church. Can I tell you, sister, why you such good help? Because God gave you some help to be the help. Woo! God gave you the Holy Ghost, which means whatever type of sister you were in the past, when God gives you the help, you are the help. Because you've been filled with the help, which is why every sister ought to say, to be his help, I need my help. Fill me up, God. Renew within me a right spirit. Is there any sisters watching that made some mistakes in your life? But type to another sister and say, I got some help. Oh, I got some help. I got some help. Good God. I wish I had some real sisters that's watching and some brothers that have made some mistakes in your life. But the reason why you're good help is because God gave you some help. Well, I feel like having church. Give God some praise, everybody. Give God praise. So the first thing that every woman here needs is help to be the help. Because you know what, brother? Listen, I want to talk to the men right quick, brothers. You didn't marry Genesis 1 and 2 Eve. You married a Genesis 3 Eve. Yeah, she got issues. She's not Genesis 1 and 2 Eve. She's the Eve that ate the fruit. 
She's not the Genesis 1 and 2, which means you got to be patient with her while she helps you. You got to be patient and understand God put her in your life to speak some stuff over you. All you single brothers, I'm telling you, I'm not playing because I've been teaching you for a while. But you walk up to me with just any kind of sister and say, girl, Pastor, I want you to just, she's going to be more. No, sister girl can't help you. Can't help nobody. All she can do is just dress up and all that. She has no sub. Find you somebody for real that's going to help. Find you a sister that's been prayed over. I don't care how many mistakes she done made in her life. I don't care what she brings with her. She's a different kind of woman now. All you brothers that are married to a woman of God, you speak kingdom over her. All you brothers that are married, speak kingdom over your wife. And you say, girl, you are what God is. You're the help. I'll call you what God calls you. And every sister's watching ought to say, God, I can't be the help until you send me the help. Because God, if you send me the help, I love my husband better. If you send me the help, I know when to walk out the room instead of cussing him out. If you send me the help, won't no other man flirt with me saying stuff to me that my husband don't to tempt me to go home with him. If you send me the help, I'll never be that sister I used to be. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Woo! I feel an anointing for couples tonight. But let me tell you something. Those of you who are single, there's absolutely nothing wrong in being single for the rest of your life and loving God. Divorcees or people who don't feel a call of marriage. But if you're going to have a family, you need to get married. If you're going to have children or make love, you're going to have to have a family. You're going to have to be a family. Go on and get married and ask God to send you somebody. Those of you who are single, don't settle now. Don't settle. Wait on God. You wait on God. Just don't get any kind of brother. You wait on God. Get a breathe on brother. Come on, brother with purpose, parameters. Come on. But just wait on God, but keep believing God to place you together. We are going to push family at GTV as old fashioned as it may be. I still believe in family, the God kind of family. Amen. Come on. Is there, if there's anybody that needs prayer about your marriage, or if you're single and you want the anointing of relationship to fall on you, then I want you to call that number or email us. And we're, we're going to believe God for singles who want to be married. I, listen, I don't want to be sleeping with people that I'm not married to, but I can't find the right kind of husband, Pastor. I don't just want to settle. Come on. I want to touch and agree with you. We're going to pray for you, okay? All right. Listen, if you want some more information, connect with us as a ministry. Uh, the information is on the screen. Give us a call. Shoot us an email, all right? God bless you. All right, let's get a seed on tonight. Let's get a seed. Let's get a seed. Uh, the giving is on the screen. Uh, like I said, again, I just thank each and every one of you who support our Wednesday night. Not only just watching, okay, and uh, eating, okay, but also seeding, giving. Thank you for your financial support because our Wednesday night offer, as we still are doing this virtual, we haven't had a in-person Bible study yet, but while we're doing this virtual, I want to thank you because you didn't have to do it. You could hear it behind this virtual space and not give anything, but I want to thank you, GTV Nation, um, for you know your faithfulness and knowing the importance of what we're trying to do here in the ministry. And um, for the last couple of years, you have helped us now to get this baptism pool now so that we can have our citywide baptism. And so I, I'm so grateful and thankful for that. And so I just want to let you know, and that's just not the only thing that we're going to do. So keep on giving, keep on supporting our Wednesday night financially, because that's our evangelism on time. So, you know, we don't pass out tracks like we used to go to how, you know, we have tracks and can't do that now, but you still can be a witness when you give on Wednesdays, financially, you are being a witness because we you are using that uh, gift, that seed, into evangelism so that we can go out. So you really are doing evangelism with us. And so I just want to say thank you, all right? Listen, can't wait. I want to go ahead and thank um, all of you in advance. Yes, I've been celebrating 15 years, 15 years of being the pastor of Greater True Vine Church. And um, I thank God for it. I thank God for every uh, experience that I've had these 15 years, uh, some ups and downs, but through it all, God have always been faithful. 
and um, have given me such a great people. You are somebody. I love you. And I just go ahead and want to thank you in advance for uh, what you're going to do for uh, me and my girl um, this Sunday. So thank you for appreciating us. And uh, you're just going to give me just the more motivation to be the best pastor that I can be. OK, but I want to thank you. Meet us this Sunday. Listen, I got my friend, my brother, uh, Dr. Floyd Daniels from Denton, Texas. He's going to be our guest speaker uh, for that celebration. So come on out. And those that have been watching us virtually, if you're in the Dallas Forward area, I would love to see you, to see you and say, hey, Pastor, I enjoy you on, on, on Facebook Live or YouTube. I want you, to, I, I would just love to see your face in the place, okay? All right, remember this, why settle for good when great is available? God bless you. Can't wait to see you. Bye-bye.